everybody can you hear me is everybody happy now we can't wait for these people who are late can we we got to get this show on the road okay will everybody step in please okay I think we're gonna start off with a little bit of environmental video projector man let's show them what the Civic League looked like 15 years ago we'll show them what congressman Lantos looked like congressman Gilman raise the Put that music up. This is the history of your league 15 years ago. A hearing, a rally, and that great dinner in the Sheraton with Dr. Agoba. Listen to it. The Congressional Human Rights Caucus is uh, very pleased to open this hearing 
on human rights issues in Yugoslavia by underscoring the purpose of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, which is a bipartisan activity of the Congress, and which has one single objective, and that is to diminish and hopefully eventually to eliminate human rights abuses wherever they occur. The raging tide of democratization in Eastern Europe makes more salient the issue of human rights and political autonomy for ethnic Albanians in the Kosovo province of Yugoslavia. It gives me great pleasure to call on a distinguished former colleague, a most effective uh, former member of the Executive Committee of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, uh, who has uh, fought for human rights uh, on many continents and in many different situations, and who has taken uh, such a prominent leadership role on this issue, uh, the Honorable Joe Diogarbi. State terrorism is alive and well, maybe not in Moscow, but in Belgrade. And we've got to do something about it, and we've got to send a very, very strong signal I was forced to go and testify. I wasn't forced to testify, but I was forced to wear a bulletproof vest when I went to Geneva, and again, when I did rallies in front of the United Nations in New York. In Geneva, I went there because Mr. Hadri was shot down because he was ready to deliver to the special rapporteur the 34 names documented. I took those names literally off his body, his wife gave them to me, and I continued that journey under threats, and I had to wear a bullet proof vest. The issue is not terrorism, not certainly Albanian terrorism, because Albanians don't fire back. They've learned to be like Gandhi, to be like Martin Luther King, and literally they demonstrated that today by leaving those halls outside so this meeting could continue, and they traveled from California, Dallas, and all over. And I want to thank those people as well. Is it not true that um they have a radio station of their own. Do they have that in South Africa? Let me say this. Do they? You, know, you, no you compare the them, Mr. DeGuardi. No. Listen, we can't go with relative justice. We have Mr. to go Guardi, with Mr. DeGuardi, you made is, some very yeah. inflammatory statements here. I did, here. because Mr. Milosevic has been very inflammatory some, against and, and the Albanians, and someone has to speak up against them. And thank God we have the Congress of the United States to stand up for oppressed people, well, including the Coast Guard. Yes, but Mr. DeGuardi, you need to be accurate when you're a witness, especially when you're a paid lobbyist for a group. I'm an ethnic Albanian. Now, you Albanian. have to be I'm accurate. an ethnic Albanian. I'm an ethnic Albanian. I'm the president of the Albanian American Civic League and the Albanian American Foundation, and I resent those intonations. Me kete e keni nderuar popullin shqiptar në Kosovë dhe kudo që gjinit në botë. You've shown the respect and, and the honor for the Albanian people wherever they live. With this invitation... Okay, let me begin by introducing one of our great supporters, and let me say this, it's going to be difficult to say the word great because everyone here is great tonight. And now the United States of America is so lucky to have someone with the background of Tom Lantos, and when you get Tom, you get Annette. Let's say hello to Tom Lantos! Tonight, Annette and I are telling you that we are deeply grateful for the privilege of being at this historic evening. And if you'll allow us, tonight we feel like Albanians.
we know we've got a good friend. Let me put him on, Congressman Tom Lantos. The winds of freedom and democracy are sweeping the whole of Eastern and Central Europe, and they will not stop at the borders of Kosovo. Friend, Congressman Ben Gilman. Thank you, Joe. It's great being here with all of you, and you're in an important place right across from the White House, and I hope they're all listening, because this is an important cause for you, for us, for all freedom-loving peoples throughout the world. You know, uh, you couldn't have picked a better supporter for your cause than former Congressman Joe Diaguardi. He's still in our minds. Congressman Diaguardi, who stands for all of the important things we all hold so dearly, and that's human rights throughout the world. Thank and you, Joe, man. may you long continue in that effort. First of all, I'm very honored to be here. And I believe in freedom, and I believe in human rights, and I believe in what happened in Kosovo at the earliest possible time. We cannot let uh, people be subject to tyranny anymore, oppression anymore. People are entitled to their freedom. They're entitled to their basic rights. And so I agree with the pride. Free Kosovo, and do it now. Go, and we're still fighting for Kosovo. Are we going to finish the job? Yeah. You better believe we're going to finish the job. That's why we're here tonight, and God bless you all for coming. This is a great evening. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you proud to be Albanian? Yeah. Are you proud to be American? Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right, now, uh, let a few people have to leave. Uh, Senator Jeff Klein, come on. Senator Klein, a new state senator, by the way. Give him a rousing applause. Klein, Klein, Klein. He, as an assemblyman, represented a very, very large Albanian community, probably the largest in New York State on the Pelham Parkway, Arthur Avenue. And now, yes, and now he's a New York State senator, and he's a good friend. We've got Republicans and Democrats, and now we've got another good Democrat he came here to say hello to you. He has to run to another, another event. Thank you so much for coming, Jeff. Thank you, Joe. I think it's important uh, we all say a very special thank you to a very special man who's really dedicated his life uh, to a very simple cause, Albanian freedom. Congressman Joe Diaguati, everyone. Let's give him a big friend. And Shirley. Besides uh, having the honor of representing such a large Albanian community, in the Bronx and Westchester, uh, I have another very personal reason for being here today. Uh, my grandparents were Holocaust survivors from Hungary. And I remember it very, very clearly as a young boy, sitting down to the dinner table during holiday meals and asking my grandmother where her family was. You know, here was a woman who uh, now lived in the United States. She didn't have any aunts or uncles, a niece, a nephew, absolutely no family. And the only reason why she was able to survive was my grandfather, who came here first, went back to the old country uh, to take a wife. And uh, he was lucky enough to find my grandmother because a year later, her entire village was wiped out, brought to the concentration camp. So I think the Jewish people, and certainly the Albanian people, share a very, very common bound. It's something that's, uh, I think, very, very special. And I'm here to say thank you. Uh, for my grandparents, uh, to all the Holocaust survivors, because there was very, very few uh, who heard the Jewish cause during World War II. And the Albanian people were there. They protected the uh, Jewish people from total annihilation in their own country in Albania. So uh, I say thank you to that.